and welcome to the 72 PC 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 aka the 72 pin connector pretty cool podcast personal computer I like it I like it, I like it. <laughs> What's up guys This is the podcast where you can join the conversation and the game we stream these live on Twitch so say that say the words in the thing to us Eric Eric is here hi Hey, Adam. We also have a Tom. Tom is here. Tom is brought to you by mango flavored seltzer water. It's oh. mango flavored and it happens to be water. Nice. No ginger flavored seltzer to water today? No, no. I went mango and then I've got straight up water. Uh, and then I've got cool chocolate shake thing. And I also have a beer. <laughs> cool chocolate shake thing. Is it a chocolate yeah, what is shake that? beer? It is. It is an organ, organic nutrition, creamy chocolate fudge nutritional shake. Mmm, that oh, sounds yeah. good. Is it, is it good? So it's actually, see, it's not terrible. Is that it's is that fancy and sure? Is that your quick, convenient dinner? Exactly. The I've been yes. busy. Oh, it's time for a podcast. Oh crap! I forgot to eat today. Yep. It's the <laughs> thing where uh, where I need to like slam something and then take some weird drugs and uh, and it works perfectly. Oh. Nice. Uh, yeah, we've already got a hydration request. I, oh my I guess. Jeezy, okay. Okay. I just have some water. I Holy I have... shit, did I think ahead? Delicious. What? No. No. Stay hydrated out there. And uh I have a coffee too, which is very irresponsible for my Ooh. sleep schedule at this time. But Oh, well, that's all right. But there's nothing know. wrong with dinner coffee. So Tom, you said shake and you said also a beer. So my head instantly went to Boulder Shake Stouts. I don't oh remember if you remember that. Dude, the milk cho- or the chocolate stout through them. Oh man, it tastes like a fucking milkshake. Oh, so <laughs> good. That sounds good. It's so good. It it is delicious. Is it kind of like um what was that Young's double chocolate stout that they had at the uh, pub? Oh my god. It's even tastier than yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, really? Young's Double Chocolate is actually possibly the only beer Oops, I can think I of it. that's better warm than cold. Hello? Oh, what? Really? I like <laughs> Young's Double at room, t- it's at not room bad. temp. Room temp. It's pretty good. It's really not bad. It's been a while since I had one of but, those, so I'm going to have to try again. What was the peanut butter one we had the one time? Um, it was a peanut oh, butter. Sweet, uh, sweet Baby Jesus. <laughs> oh, sweet Baby Jesus. Sweet Baby uh, Jesus. Peanut butter, uh, chocolate peanut butter one wasn't it i passed it to him uh yeah, yeah it was chocolate sweet. peanut butter something like that yeah was sweet baby jesus very unconventional yes my favorite thing at the pub was young it's it's a half and half they call it a a brave liver like there's different names for it but half young stubble chocolate stout and then the other half is strong bow so you Ooh. get kind of like an overly sweet cider Kind of balance those two out, let those flavors get to know each other, and uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. it's fucking fantastic. So my favorite thing at the pub was also involving Strongbow, but it's what they called a snake bite, which was half harp, half Strongbow. So it was like uh, a regular oh, lager, a good. nice crisp, clean lager mixed with a uh, pretty dry cider, and it was a really nice combination. Hmm. Don't get me wrong, the, like, uh... I love Strongbow on its own, but it tends to be like really, really sweet. So mixing it with something that's, you know, really heavy and, and dark, like the Young's Double Chocolate, is just perfect. What was the one? Was it Queen's Velvet? Oh, that's good. It was... Oh, uh, yeah. Kentucky a vanilla Bourbon Porter. Barrel Ale? Yeah, and a yeah. Vanilla Porter. Yeah, that thing was on point. I've actually made those, like, by hand. <laughs> Picked up by a Kentucky hand. Bourbon and a fucking Breckenridge Vanilla Porter, which is the best Vanilla Porter I've ever had. Is by far only vanilla porter. I've no, had. no competition. Breckenridge is had a lot of vanilla porters, but Breckenridge is in. Breckenridge is a really good brewery. I like all my all time favorites are probably number two, two or three. I I can't disagree with that. Like it's they're they're solid. Bells. I've, I've got to give my my favorite though to Chimay because I love that the spicy uh, spicy Belgian brews. Oh. And they make some of the best. I don't know that I've ever had any of theirs. Really? Oh, it's so good. So good. It's got that um, 
like if you uh if you like wheat beers and belgians and like that type of funk that goes on with the beer uh you will you will love chimay so i'm i'm a huge bells guy favorite brewery uh this made me instantly think of um when we went to visit my uh in-laws they know that i can't get my favorite beer out here so mm. they pick up a 24 pack of it <laughs> it is a fucking ipa i love <laughs> two-hearted ale but i'm not drinking 24 of those motherfuckers and like you will eventually like over over an entire month i wasn't handling 24 of those so like yeah but i i love bells i wish they were around washington area yeah yeah bells is absolutely solid what about you, Adam? You have an actual preference on brewery? You're just like, eh. No. I don't drink at all much anymore. Very, very oh, few and oh. far between. But no, I don't really have a, a favorite. I mean, I really like Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale. Probably my favorite of anything. Yeah, those yeah. are... um, Their pumpkin was really good. I really like their pumpkin. Hmm. But I, I like pumpkin beers. So I'm that guy. Nothing wrong with enjoying a pumpkin. I just thing. I can't get into pumpkin anything. Like, we're, we're getting into that time frame where everything's going to be pumpkin flavored, and yeah, I just not your thing. I love it's fine. It. Like I, I don't hate it, but yeah, yeah. I don't understand I the the pumpkin like latte craze and stuff. I don't think the pumpkin spice is a good flavor complement to coffee. I like it I, in in desserts like cookies and it's enough sugar. Yeah, <laughs> with enough sugar, yeah, it, anything is possible. It's more of the sweet pumpkin more than the nutmeg spicy pumpkin for the lattes and stuff. Yeah, but I don't know. I tried one one time and it was just, I didn't like the the pumpkin spice with the coffee. Just wasn't wasn't my I, thing. I had one from one of the like small shops around Seattle. And it was good until the very last quarter of it when most of the flavor had settled to the bottom. Oh, no. Oh, and it was just an egregious punch to the face. But one of my favorite franchise things that they do with pumpkin is uh, McDonald's puts uh, pumpkin pie pies. So it's like pumpkin and cream in their apple pie form. It's pretty, oh. pretty fucking good. Nice. I like... Uh... I actually had frosted mini wheats pumpkin spice. They were really good. Wow. All things. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, they do it to everything now. I saw Triscuits pumpkin spice. Triscuits? No, that, that, that's, Triscuits. That, no, no, no. no. <laughs> no. There's, there's, there's it's gone line too far. It's gone too far for sure. I am pro pumpkin, but that is too fucking far. Triscuit. Like. <clears throat> That's not even a, me, a conventionally sweet snack. What are you doing? Exactly. <laughs> like, tell me that there's a pumpkin Chex Mix. Okay. A pumpkin Chex Mix. No, I wouldn't no, understand dog. that either. I would. Chex Mix, like, okay. Oh, yeah. You yeah, ever I had do have, like, the, the honey nut one sweet is pretty good. Sweet salties. Yeah. Those are good. Sweet salties are on Still. Point. If you're doing anything other than cracked pepper Triscuit, you're wrong. Uh, don't they have, like, a Harvest That's, Garden Triscuit? No, I'm thinking. The Garden. I, uh, they have, like, a some garden veggie or salsa or something they've got a bunch I of different kinds now just the base triscuit oh really? is that bad of me yeah i hate, like I, just hate I hate the og ones <laughs> if you're doing anything I, other than I the like cracked OG. pepper triscuits you're wrong yeah dobby dobby's on that's, with you on a, that all that's right a, that's a solid choice for sure i'm just i'm not a huge triscuit guy i'm more wheat thins personally uh, yeah, the Triscuit texture, I have to, I, I think with Triscuits, I have to have something else with it. Yeah. Like just straight Triscuits. It's kind of like eating um, shredded mini wheats without sugar. It just like kind of gets gritty in your yeah. mouth and you're just eating it because it's there not because you're actually enjoying no, them. Nobody buys the not frosted ones. Some of the, You say some that. Of the... I know. I <laughs> They shouldn't buy any of them other than the non frosted ones. They should be Get buying that, the frosted like... ones. Some of that laughing cow spreadable cheese on some original Triscuits, and that shit's my jam. Okay, I will eat I an entire that, box. Yeah. Super soft spready cheese, yeah. I mean, shit. Give me just some fucking sliced cheddar, mild yeah, or sliced. I don't care. Cheddar, cheddar. 
Dude, I, I bought a cheese grater and been buying blocks of cheese. That's and the way to go. It's everything. so much better. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. I've been doing yeah, uh, so scrambled egg, better. doing scrambled egg quesadillas Ooh, with oh. cheddar cheese. Stop making so me hungry. Good. I actually didn't eat dinner yeah. earlier. <laughs> you got you to stop doing uh, that. Scott, yes, because they actually add stuff to shreds when you buy shredded to help it from sticking to each other and stuff. Usually mm -hmm. potato starch. It's other like non-binding agents. They oh, don't, nice it flavor. doesn't melt. Shreds won't melt as well. Yeah. Yeah. If you need something melty, like getting straight up shredded cheese probably isn't the way. It's why Skyline, when you make it at home and with a bag of shredded cheese, is way different than it is in the store. And you can shred cheese pretty fucking quick with a shredder. Grab the block, bam, 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 done. As long as he's not distracted with getting those turtles, then yeah. What? Boo? <laughs> I think, I, oh, was wait. That a it took me a Shredder? second. No. Oh, yeah. God. You get Jesus. it, guys? You get it? Wow, what a reference. <laughs> I, that was I awful. Yeah. Uh, okay, please. Yep, you're welcome. We will All right, that's our show. Thank that's you it. Good. Thanks for tuning week. in, everybody. Maybe the next one will be better. Sorry. We apologize. We'll put out a statement later. That was pretty good. Damn it, don't fucking empower <laughs> don't him. Don't encourage him. <laughs> Tom should think that everything he says is awful at all times. Yep. Otherwise, we get on Lennox rants. Exactly. And no one wants a so, Lennox rant. Of, Nobody wants. Nope. nope. All right. So uh, what have you been playing this week, Eric? Uh, so I've been playing. Okay, what can I talk the longest? No, um, but no, for real, I've um, picked up a lot of Fall Guys. Or I shouldn't say a lot. I've been playing a um, round or two every night before I go to bed just so I can check the store. Because their store is pretty fucking on point. Um, They had the T-Rex in there this week, which was cool. And then I missed. But yeah, um, they had a, they had a pretty, I don't want to say big update, but they're not letting back-to-back -back team games happen anymore. Because people That's got really upset nice. with all the team games. I like the team, well, I like some of the team games. Mm. It just um, it goes way too fast if you like kill most of a lobby between two team games. I like that, dude. Give me something that eliminates two thirds of the crowd to start the <laughs> match, and I'm fucking in. See, like, give me I'm, fucking I'm prime for prime that. round one. I'm for that when I'm winning. If I'm <laughs> okay. not, like, I don't want to be oh, that you're guy. That, I'm you're that out guy. in round one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm like, oh yeah, sure. As long as this helps me, I'm in. But as soon as it goes against me, nah, I don't want that shit. <laughs> so I'm good with the uh, not backing team games back to back. Okay. So I hate the memory game, but Scott brought this up. If you, they was put the memory game round one, that would be awesome because there be I hate the memory. There wouldn't game. be enough room, so it actually start to be a race as well. It's dull. You're either the person memorizing shit, or you just do what I do, and you watch where everyone just else crowd it. Yeah. Most of the time, it works out. Yeah. I mean, it's it's they need to rework it. They either need to make it quicker, so you can't memorize shit, or they just need to get rid of it. Yeah. I would not be opposed to them completely getting rid of the memory game. I just don't think it's that good. And more importantly, I don't think it's really endemic of the fall guys experience like okay like trying to run away from the slime and, and climb that mountain awesome but trying to survive on those rollers and not fall into the slime below fucking fantastic getting hit by the stupid goddamn fan in the middle that is impossible to get past also great fall guys material standing on something not so much you mean like hexagon like hexagon there's like, that's, I'm joking. Like, that's a lot different just, you like, can't compare those that, that, that was at just being yeah. a jackass comment um so oh like, you literally you're just like oh wait it's over here i'm just gonna sit here so omi calls out oh you guys he was debating on getting this but he thought that it wouldn't live up to the hype and hmm. let's let it be, it's, be real it's not like it's this masterpiece of a game it's just a fun uh, fucking game to play with some friends it seems like one of those games. It's what you make of it. It's Absolutely. it's fun with friends. It's I'm, I'm it's, concerned it's not about the ludo your... narrative dissonance of Fall Guys. Okay, okay. <laughs> fuck off, Tom. <laughs> it, it's a fun game. It's not that much. Um, 
if you're going into it thinking all this hype means it's going to be some stellar fucking game, no, you'll burn out on it if you play it for like three hours every day for an entire week. You're going to not play it again for months. It's just how this game is going to be right now because there's not a huge variety of matches. So, but that said, I've already got like 30 hours in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. All right. Oh, that we're good. We're nice, really good. Nice shot. <laughs> yeah. But either way, fall and guys. Best at Rocket League. You you should check out it or check it out. If you have some uh, income to spare and you have some friends that already have it, you won't regret it. It's a fun time with some people. If you're gonna be playing it alone, it is a different experience. You still can enjoy sure. it, but it is a different experience. So I, th I think that is also something very important to say. Like Rocket League, you can play alone, no, no big deal. But There's literally a Fall mode Guy, for that if you really want to. Fall Guys alone, I mean, it, it's okay, but it's not the same. Yeah. But Fall Guys is meant to be experienced in a group. Yeah, and um, there was uh, one other thing on Fall Guys I must forgot about um, before we get off of that. They're uh, going to add skins for brands that make the highest charity. So they're actually having a charity competition to see what brand <laughs> is going to get put into Fall Guys. Nice. Which is yes. pretty so, fucking uh, rad. Yeah, this is this is really cool. So a bunch of brands are reaching out to the developers and saying, "Hey, can we get can we get KFC skins? Can we get this skin or that skin?" And Fall Guys is like, "You know, I know all of you are offering us big piles of money, but how about you publicly donate an obscene amount to charity, and whoever donates the max amount, that's the brand we're going to throw in as a skin. Go for it, guys. I want to uh, see. Which is really fucking cool. I want KFC to do it, man. KFC needs to come in big here. I need a fucking Colonel Sanders skin. <laughs> I need it. I would love a Colonel Sanders skin and a chicken skin. And I want to be Colonel Sanders throwing chickens off platforms. If you could be Colonel Sanders running with two chickens in your hands like this, just running down, that'd be great. But I also have an so, uh, yeah, affiliation uh, for Colonel Sanders ever since we uh, cosplayed as Colonel Sanders. <laughs> ever since you fell in love with Colonel Sanders, yes, I know. <laughs> yes, I feel the same way. But no, that that's really cool. Um, and it's actually really fucking cool. The devs to say, yeah, we'll we'll let you have a skin. Just Ooh. throw some money down for a good cause instead of throw us yeah. money, which is what a lot yeah, of companies like they, would have done. They could have gone the EA route and said, yeah, the bidding starts at this amount. I mean, let's and, be fair. And gone full, like, evil. That's with not it. EA. And it's not evil. Saying, hey, you give us money, we'll put you in the game. That's not evil. And that's not just EA. That's common practice. Say that whoever gives the most to charity, that's just really good on the devs. Yeah. So that, that's that's a really good feel goody. Most of the time, our news is kind of shitty. That was a good one. We've been like ending it. on yep. the worst news stories for like three oh podcasts God. in a row yeah, now. We, we won't. We won't this time. <laughs> not this time. We're not having a downer on the way out. <laughs> oh, we're going to. Something else is going to come up. This last just minute. in. Like, well, a truck full of orphans was killed by a Ubisoft manager today. And he was on their way to the fired. EA. <laughs> <laughs> on, on their way to uh, the EA re-education camp. God damn it, Tom. <laughs> There is no problem with Mass Effect Andromeda. Ah, uh, anyway. Um, so games. Games. <laughs> Who else has some games? I'm on the same trend of the past three weeks in that I've played literally nothing all week except for Tarkov. Not that I've played a whole lot this week. I didn't really play much throughout the week other than like, uh, like messing with the hideout stuff and collecting my Bitcoin or whatever. But uh, that's the only thing I've been playing. That's it. Just nothing else is interesting right now. Um, I've been playing a decent amount. Like I actually did mid, like I streamed it oh, in the yeah. middle of the week. I streamed some uh, Tarkov. That's pretty cool. Had a fucking awesome run where I got blacked out by a PMC who must have really fucked up himself. I killed him as a scav with a lucky sweeping headshot. I and, uh, saw yeah. that clip. <laughs> you yeah, had that, no that was... business surviving that. There was, <laughs> oh, dude, I was. I he, was dead to rights. I thought it was a scab. He had like a nice gun <laughs> and Two the nice drop guns. and the drop on you. You weren't even behind any cover or anything. Like he really just, should have been able to kill you there. That's unfortunate. 
I fucking one tap Mosin him. He had he to be so he, pissed. Yeah, he had to have panicked or something. Well, he was using PS against me, and he had BT. So okay, for non Tarkov <laughs> people, he had really good strong ammo, and he was using weak shit against me. He might have had, had he the, used uh, the other ammo. I was dead. He might have had the they call the uh, a little bit of ammo salad going on or bullet salad going on. Where they have like four different types no. of ammo, like partially in their mags and stuff. He he had different ammo based on different mags. Like he had a mag of oh, BT okay. and two mags of PS. He he is, might have. Oh. Hmm. Either way, he fucked up. I bullshit <laughs> killed him. If you're interested, the clips on our stream or on our page. Okay, so I've I've got a mechanics question for Tarkov. How? How effective is that really? Like, you've got three mags of varying quality ammo. Like, whenever I start a firefight in Tarkov, or really a firefight gets started on me in Tarkov, I don't have time to say, oh, well, it's this guy with this armor, and he sounds like this, and oh. I think I'm going to flip to this mag for the maximum output. Like, it's just happening, man. There's no fucking way I, I would have the the wherewithal to say oh wait i need to pick this mag over this one no, for these reasons no it's not it's not like that um the people that do multiple types of ammo in the same magazine will do usually just to save some money so they'll put like really expensive top tier ammo in like their first five shots or whatever so that okay. those initial bullets initially like the first the first bullets they shoot out of that mag at a player will like immediately armor. get through the armor and do as much damage as possible and then the rest of that mag will be a slightly worse uh pvp ammo to save some money because some of those ammos okay. are ridiculously expensive so if you need to line up a shot against somebody you know the first five rounds are going to be yeah you know, pretty decent yeah, yeah. okay yeah. that makes more sense yeah multi mags like different mags of shit is a little weird to me mm -hmm. but what did you do? I just think that some yeah. guy like wait wait no don't don't shoot me I'm using the wrong ammo hang on give me just <laughs> just just a minute hang on just a second let me uh yeah. all right all right now we're good now we can fight I do I have carried different guns for that kind of purpose yeah oh yeah, yeah people yeah, might take like a sense. like a bolt action sniper and then like a submachine gun for close range yeah. or something like if I have a scav killing mission I will carry uh, hunters and then whatever my normal gun is oh okay. Just because I, I like the hunter for a scav kill, Tip, typically a typically one shot one kill. Shot. Yeah, nice, powerful ammo. Yeah, I had a couple of interesting kills today, actually. <laughs> oh God, I wanted so, to get onto your double kill. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess we could do that one first. Um, so Eric and I were leaving the resort area of Shoreline. Um, I guess that doesn't really matter. We're in, we're in a map, and we see these two guys not too far away. I don't know what like less than 50 yards away right like oh they were definitely. pretty close they were fairly close they could hear us walk if There's we were rocking two of them so like oh crap um i can't remember if you took any shots initially no um i threw a grenade in their general direction and we're we're looking around seeing where they went to usually you throw a grenade to reposition somebody basically force them out of a certain area and then you can you know spray them down or whatever um so i threw the grenade we're looking around. I'm kind of flanking around the rock. And Eric's like, oh, there's a body here. You got one. Oh, there's two bodies here. You got both of them. I double killed what? with a nade. <laughs> it was so cool. Oh, damn. It was beautiful because, like, I'm being super cautious. I'm like, they know we're here. Yeah. We're about to be in a fucking firefight. Yes. And they were just fucking dead on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> that was fantastic. And, and I needed the the icing on the cake of that is that i have a task for getting pmc grenade kills so that that was a twofer which is awesome and um, the other one was just weird the other one was just weird so i'm so i'm in this building uh it's a pretty good loot building so you can usually count on some pvp here um playing as a scav so i don't have i don't have a great loadout um it's kind of a a piece together gun with you know mediocre ammo in it or whatever so i hear somebody outside um i hear him pushing up i we get some some back and forth fire going on inside the building uh, i go outside the building to flank around he flanks around too he tosses a grenade we have this really interesting fight that's fun 
And yeah, the fight would have been over, you know, earlier if, if either of us had better ammo and were better at shooting each other. But it was a fun fight. It kind of took a little while. Um, so I, so I, I got to a point where I shot some more at him, and he's behind this barrier thing. And I'm waiting on him to push around the other side. He doesn't. He's just kind of chilling there. Um, so, I, so I start to move around, and I'm not seeing him. I'm like, well, where could he, he have gone? Because I would have seen him move, right? Just the way the environment was in that area. He couldn't have just gone anywhere. But I was like, where did he go? And I'm like looking around, making sure he's not flanking me again. Uh, so, so I go to the behind the barrier where he was, and I see this bright blue helmet, which, by the way, not a good choice in Tarkov. <laughs> 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 but that's what he had on, and it's you know he's on the ground. I'm like, oh, I must have killed him. Okay, so I go prone right by him. Um, I'm, I'm facing him, and he's facing me. So I go prone. Our, our faces are like right, right there. Like we could have kissed each other. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This isn't a dead body position. This is a guy that is alive and prone position. Oh, no. <laughs> so I just start like, I just hold down left click, right? <laughs> and I'm like hit firing him <laughs> prone. We're like forehead to forehead and I'm just shooting him and I kill him. And I'm just wondering, what is he doing? Like, <laughs> so, so playing dead is a valid thing that occasionally works. Like I've seen people do that. You know, they play dead, people come up close to them, and when they get close, they un unload on him. This dude never even fired a bullet. He's just laying there accepting his fate, I guess. I don't know what he was doing. Was he healing? <laughs> no, he was not moving at all. He was literally prone, stationary, not moving. I walk up to his body. He can hear me coming. Sound is huge in this game. He could have heard, he heard me walk up to it. Nice shot. Um, he heard me walk up to him. He heard me prone down. He had to have seen me. We're forehead to forehead. Like I, sh I should have been taking up most of his screen. And he just didn't do anything. So Adam and I were in this raid together and Dobby was watching us. Adam uh, server mutes himself or indefinite. So he can't hear us. We can't hear him. That way there's no sound interference. Scott's watching him. And all of a sudden I hear Scott say, what the fuck was that? <laughs> And then Adam explains that story. That is just fucking nuts. I, I don't understand Insane. it. I don't know. Like, if we used to put together a compilation to the story of Tarkov, that would have to make it. Because that is just so Ooh. fucking weird. It was weird. I don't know if maybe he was just like... I, I don't know. I'm going to die. I'm it's just going to... out. Maybe he's hoping that I would just go away. Like, all right. Maybe I got a, some shots on him and scared him. Maybe he'll just go away, you know, and I can, you know, I can't win this fight. Maybe he'll just go away. So maybe he thought that, or maybe he's just like, all right, I'm a prone in this bush and AFK. Maybe, maybe mid fight. He was like, all right, I have to go to the bathroom and this can't wait, even though I'm literally in the process of shooting somebody right now. <laughs> hey, you don't know what's going on in his I'm, neck of the bush. Yeah, I don't know. It may be an emergency uh, bathroom run. I, I don't know. He might have but literally yeah. had an accident in his pants sitting there gaming. <laughs> well, I mean, if and he if was he actually didn't, at maybe desk, he, he might have after. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So that, that'll that be a memorable one because that was just very odd. Yeah, I have nothing. That's fantastic. Uh, well, Tarkov. Um, it's a game. Uh, Tom, it's you, you've, got a, you've got a few things on your list this week. Yeah. So, uh, this week, this week, again, at work has been kicking my ass. Um, but last weekend I found some time to try out some new stuff. So, uh, I went basically down the list of Steam's VR games and, you know, the new stuff and stuff people were playing and stuff that was cheap and just added a bunch of random shit to my list. And, yeah, there's, uh, there's actually some decent stuff here. So the first game, uh, the irkiest of the games. The irkiest. Fishing Simulator, Ultimate <laughs> Fishing Simulator VR. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of fun. Um, the, only, the only downside is that like if you're expecting an arcade fishing game, I don't think this is really it because you will wait. And wait. And wait. This isn't Sega Bass the fish fishing. don't bite, and then you wait a little bit more, and then 
You wait. Oh, what did? No, no, didn't quite bite. Okay. okay. And you wait. I don't even. And then it bites, and then then you break your line, and then you got to do that whole process all over again. <laughs> Explaining to you the drag <laughs> while on stream that that was that made me smile a little bit. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was fishing, and you know what? Like, it sounds boring, it sounds dull, but Jesus, that's relaxing, man. I mean, like, I actual fishing, actual fishing sounds boring and dull until you actually do it. I was just, I've yeah. gotten Adam out. That At was a point, different kind of fishing too. We were like actually walking through the water and like actively moving around looking for fish and stuff <laughs> which was fun I, was so I, uh, I have been fishing once i, oh, I caught really? something believe it or not it was it was tiny but yeah yeah um I mean, like it's it's nothing to like write home about or take a picture of but yeah i, I caught something i don't even remember what it was all i remember is that it was tiny and we threw it back <laughs> Um, <laughs> so you, you, went, the uh, bites on, you enjoyed your time. Hearing... Yeah, you enjoyed your time with the uh, fishing simulator. Fishing simulator. Ultimate fishing simulator VR. <laughs> yes, I did. Um, I I really did enjoy the game. Um, it's relaxing. It's chill. There's actually a decent amount of uh, depth and customization to it. So you earn money by catching fish, and then you can upgrade your equipment and locations and where you're going. There's an entire like campaign in there. Uh, it's a it's a pretty cool game. Um, so if you're looking to do fishing stuff, but in a VR headset, uh, there's not. Not really many options. This is basically it. There's your I think Euro fishing simulator or is uh or Euro fishing is VR, I think. Is it is it okay? Yeah, that, that's yeah. Right. I Irk, I'm really interested to try this out with you. Um, it does have multiplayer support, but the thing that people absolutely hate about this game is that you will see somebody's body there, but you won't see their actual movements. Oh, that's not so like they're uh... yeah, they're there, but it's they're not like sense like you're not seeing them cast or, or real stuff in or anything like that that is They're possibly the only VR standing there that might be the only vr game i've heard of where you don't actually see the body movement yeah for multiplayer because mm. like that's such a big thing with multiplayer and vr is being able yeah, to see what, the hand so, gestures so and shit. what is the purpose yeah. of vr immersion what kind of things <laughs> enhance immersion i don't know other players doing you know the actions that they're doing not feeling yeah. like so, you're in a 1998 multiplayer game where they just have like <laughs> T pose walking around. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it was. It's not bad. Like that thing is annoying as hell. But like for me, sitting on my couch, drinking a beer, listening to chill tunes, sitting by a virtual lakeside and just waiting for shit to bite. By the way, they've got those. I, I don't know the term. The fucking sticks you put in the ground that holds your fishing rod and then you put a bell on it. A rod holder? Ah, yeah, okay. It's a super technical <laughs> term. So they've got different <laughs> rod holders. You can buy those with the cash you earn from fishing and literally just sit there, kick back, drink a beer. That's it. That's the whole game. <laughs> that does sound boring. Yeah. It's, it's so, brilliant. I love so, it. Eric, you are the, the fisherman of the group. That is like one of your, I don't know, is that like your favorite hobby? Yeah. So, what is your favorite fishing game of all time? Or are there any um, that are that you think are actually really good? Championship bass. If you're a bass fisherman or enjoy that type of more aggressive movement going after stuff, Championship Bass for the PlayStation was excellent. Um, they had challenges that forced you to actually use certain types of lures and presentations that actually would reflect into real life. Like they, they did some stuff with that that was kind of cool for a PS1 game where some of it felt kind of real. So I really I mean, enjoyed that one. I'm going to go agree hard with Dobby because I don't know the first thing about fishing other than there's fish involved. And say Sega Bass Fishing for the Dreamcast is by far the favorite, my most favorite fishing game I've ever played. I played so, one on PS1 a lot. And I don't even remember which one it was. I just remember catching a lot of boots. Oh, that wasn't Championship Bass. Animal Crossing? No. no, fuck Animal that, Crossing. dude. The junk out of the river in Animal Crossing is infuriating. <laughs> was it? Was there one called Real Fishing? 
like like fishing reel oh, but this... real probably was, that, was it on ps1 hey i fish hold on time out time out do we have someone else in this community that fishes outside of dobby and i sorry got caught off but real fishing sounds right okay that might have been the one mainly because it's an awful fucking play on words yeah <laughs> i can't remember love it it wasn't i know it wasn't specifically only bass fishing because you could catch like trout and stuff too ah uh, but yeah um there hasn't been a good fishing game in a long 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 time as far as i'm concerned tom okay so i'm actually intrigued to try this yeah it might be worth checking it out i mean it was i want to say it was fairly cheap i need to look up the price but honestly i just took i took 60 bucks it was my birthday last weekend and uh i decided all right i'm just gonna buy a bunch of weird shit and play it all tonight um so with that i played Rorilla. uh and it's a game where you start as a very very tiny monkey and you sneak around a randomly generated uh like roguelite sort of level and find food to eat and you eat food and you get bigger and then you smash ah, yes. i That's love it. those types it, is there anything just... that could kill you that you have to avoid until you're big enough to oh, kill yeah. it yeah there's yes. like because you're you're an escaped monkey and apparently the government has got a monkey program or something and they will shoot you on site if they see you there are hunters you have to avoid like it's a really lo-fi game like it is it is low poly, it is low fidelity, it is everything. It's just in service of the gameplay alone. But it works. It's not the most amazing game in the world, but I think I paid five bucks for it. It's a very cool diversion and uh, really, really fun in VR because I haven't played anything like that. So uh, it's, it's neat. There was a game I used to play in elementary school where you were a little fish and you had to eat plankton and then you got to be a little bigger fish and you could eat smaller fish. And you went up the food chain and the whole time you had to dodge shit. So like you had to dodge like the fish that were always bigger than you. This had that feel, but in VR. Yeah, exactly. You have yeah. to avoid like dogs and bears and shit. And there's stuff roaming around in the woods. And then eventually you get so big that you're not eating the apples off the trees. You're just picking up the trees and eating them at things. <laughs> uh, it's really, really cool. That's cool. So how's the VR aspect of that? Because that sounds like something you would just play with controller. Uh, you, I could absolutely see this being a controller game, but what makes it different? Like, if this was an indie game that was just controller only, I wouldn't have bought it. Right? Like those, I would have played like Agar or something else that has that kind of mechanic, because everyone has made a game like that. In VR, it means that, like, when I grow, it's not like a meter going up or just a graphic going up. It's like. I, I can actually see I was this big. Like, there were tables that I couldn't quite get to because I was too tiny. And now I'm a gorilla and I'm running around that barn that I was trapped in at the oh, start of the game and, like, picking up buildings and throwing it. Like, I am physically growing. It's first person. Yeah, it's oh, first person. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes, that so makes you're running around physically, like, picking up trees and throwing them at buildings and knocking shit over and... Uh, I got to the point where, uh, like, I was grabbing people's guns and shooting them, and then taking the dead bodies and throwing them at the other alive people, which is just horrific and amazing. Uh, I really loved it. It was like five bucks or something. So uh, if you're looking for some some stupid uh, cheap VR fun, Grow Rilla, I gotta say, it's the right game for the right price for me. Which one did you enjoy more, VR fishing or VR gorilla growing? <sighs> Uh, Gorilla for sure. I also bought a couple sports games. What? Tom, yeah, what is happening? But... You played a fishing game and now you're downloading sports games? Exactly. I said I wanted to spend six What's next? On only All of the Ubisoft shit. open world games? I might have been playing an <laughs> open world game too. <laughs> well, yeah, that's not that's within your wheelhouse, but Ubisoft? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah I... not Ubisoft. We'll get to that one, in like that one. Uh, but I don't, I don't want to, you know, monopolize all the time. So I'm just leaving you with the sports game teaser. Well, come back to that. The sports I game mean, teaser. Unless there's literally look, nothing else. I you look I, at the list? Yeah. yeah. Look at the I list. got Rocket okay, League. So I got Final <laughs> Soccer VR, which is actually really, really interesting. Um, if you have one of the rare Vive trackers, it's quite literally the top of an HTC Vive controller, you can strap to things. 
you can actually tie it to your feet. And this game works with it. And you can kick a virtual soccer ball with your real life feet. It's That's weird as hell. Kind of neat, I <laughs> that guess. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> yeah, it does I, sound now, dangerous. I do, I do not have the vibe trackers. Uh, so the, the kicking, I didn't actually get to try, but I wanted, I specifically bought it for the goalkeeping feature. So I was running around, saving shots, jumping in front of stuff. It works okay. Um, my main issue is that the goal size is really big. Um, but your it doesn't like exactly match your play space. So like you'll you'll run over, you'll see the grid, and you're like, ah, I don't want to run into the TV, and then it'll fly past you and go in the net. You're like, ah, well fuck. There is an option to make you move farther than you're moving in real life, but it's really disorienting, and I would call it an anti-feature. Um so uh yeah it's it's interesting there is like a they call it a story mode it's not it's a bunch of different challenges all set up in a row uh but it works okay um there is an option i didn't try it out and from the reviews it sounds like it might be completely broken at this point but you can line up people who have the feet trackers and people who don't and actually have people kicking shots at people in the goal in a full on multiplayer mode. Huh. Which wow. sounds like it could be pretty cool if it ever works again. But um, so here's so yeah. here's how I kind of see that though. Segment of population with VR. Really fucking small. Section of yep. people yeah. with VR and additional trackers to strap upon body parts. Fucking minuscule. <laughs> yeah. There's and like then those people also people have to be there. soccer fans. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Like one of the hardest of sports to that? watch. Well, really? if I you're, an I mean, it's not as I, uh, popular I, here, I, but I don't. I wouldn't say that. I cannot I'd watch give a... Final Soccer VR my recommendation. It's it's fine if you're really desperate for soccer in VR. It's basically the best you're gonna get outside of uh, different weird modes in um, Rec, Room. Rec Room. But uh, yeah, honestly, I'd rather play Rec Room. Um. It's it's kind of cool though because you're standing there on the field, you've got the crowd around you. Like it really feels like you're a big ass soccer star trying to save these shots. Um, but yeah, other than that, there's not much going on for it. Uh, I also bought a football game. American football. Obviously, you said soccer. American earlier. football. Yeah. So we've got two both kinds of football here. Um, I got two MD VR football, which is a remix of an earlier game that was um about forever ago i want to say 2017 I'd be wrong um but it's kind of interesting um you actually set up plays by drawing on a whiteboard like picking people and drawing routes for them to run before you start the the game and it's um i want to say it's offense only like there's not much or any defense that you can do um, but on offense, you are picking plays, you know, right before the snap and your, your robot teammates are running around, getting into the formation and then running the plays that, that you drew out for them. And you've got to, you know, chuck that ball to them and complete some passes. And it's kind of cool. So you could draw um, my, squiggly lines, left, right, left, right, left, right. And they'll run that. It will do it. They That's do cool. It. Yes. It's it's really cool. You can also customize your team. You can customize like the the sound effects, the jerseys, the way your stadium looks. It's it's actually a really really cool game. The issue is that the core of the game isn't great because throwing things in VR, unless you get those physics spot on, it's gonna feel bad and it's gonna feel weird. And throwing a football, you know, something where you have to be somewhat accurate. Um, just doesn't feel great uh, it's a nice diversion it was really cheap but i just wish that they would have spent more time on the core gameplay loop than everything surrounding it um if you're really desperate for football in vr this is the best that you can get uh, at least until ea puts out madden vr which i would buy i'm gonna admit that right now i would absolutely buy madden vr so i don't expect Madden to do well madden has the sole license is the only reason yeah. um back in the day I shouldn't say in the day, in like Xbox One era, like OG Xbox era. God, I hate that name. Ooh. Um, right? But ESPN made a football game that was first person. It was really good. 
It was really good. Like you would literally have to look left and right. Football games. Hmm. So that in VR would be fucking stellar. I think more first person sports games in general would be cool. Great. It's it's hard to play Mm -hmm. because you can't snap between people. Yeah. Which means you have to be able to rely. You have to have. Don't make it realistic. Don't make a 16 person football game. Go go like the NBA jam route and have a 3v3. You can put together VR lobbies of 3v3. It happens all the time. If there were like a, like quite literally NBA jam, but in VR or, um, you know, uh, NHL 3D hockey 98 by Midway, but in VR, that would work perfect. Dude, you give me Make like, more arcade event. you give me a jam style. You give me a modern jam style game. I'll probably pick it or look into it anyway, but you put it in VR. If it's done well, Just I am it. down. <laughs> Like NBA just Jam and like Blitz. let's just do it. I love oh my Blitz. God, Blitz and VR. Oh, okay, that would be nauseating. As soon as you get no, no, no. All, all you gotta do, all you gotta do is um, like when you get down, just display like a red banner across somebody's vision that says you know tackled. Like you don't have to physically tackle them, but if you're doing the tackling and you run up to somebody, make it punch based. You have to punch <laughs> people in the face. Call like the like. 27 XFL or something. The world's first punch based sports game. Yeah. You mean boxing? <laughs> I was going to say, there's lots of boxing games. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, literally. I would love you know a football I mean. game where you punch people to tackle them. That is so NFL Blitz. I mean, they um, had like clotheslines and all that kind of shit. So, yeah. So this game, this game has a shit ton of potential, and you can tell that the dev team is max a couple of people. Uh, like this is this is definitely hard, hard indie. It's not very polished, but god damn, is it endearing? Um, so I, I gotta say, like if you want it, it's not the worst thing to pick up. It's a good diversion for a few hours, and if you're gonna play multiplayer, it's fucking great. I, I if you can I, get the people to play with. Outside of like Rec Room, I never pick up a VR game for multiplayer. It hurts. Pavlov, I got. I have. Okay, Pavlov. I've never extension. not found people playing Pavlov or yeah. Onward for that matter. But like, I got burnt with so many games I really enjoyed that the community just left. Battle Dome was so yeah. fucking sweet, and then it's gone. Yeah. Or even better, fucking Hover Junkers. That game was gold, man. Yeah. I think I think Hover Junkers died though because like when you jump into something like Pavlov or Counter Strike for that matter, you know what you're getting on the box, right? There's there's not much there, but you know that it's gonna be fun. Like you're getting the same exact shit that you signed up for, and it hasn't changed since 1998. But that's what you're in it for. With Hover Junkers, it was very much a one trick pony, and after you were done, there's not much more it had to offer what do you mean a one trick pony i love hover junkers to death but that gameplay did get stale i mean it gets stale in the same way any shooter gets stale (sighs) maybe maybe it's just me being in love with the counter-strike formula but i played pavlov for three hours last night and it was fucking great like we it was it was quite literally Pretty some dudes on a server. This was after midnight, so there were no children around. We were just shooting the shit and being assholes to each other in a fun kind of trash talking sort of way. It was great. The guy got blown up with a grenade and got thrown out of the map area and died. And someone said, no, no, you can't play the rest of the round now because you're out of the map. You were so bad. You got ejected from the game, son. You're done. And it was great. It was hilarious. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with the game. No, nothing. So that's what I'm saying. Like the game- hover junkers can't have it didn't have that kind of community aspect. You shot people, but there was no community other than that. I mean, yeah. Right? There is there's nothing keeping people there. The, the the game. Sometimes the game isn't enough. And that, that well, I think the big issue is there's not enough players. Yeah. At the time that game came out, the headset count was stupid low. But Either way, yeah. what else you got, Tom? Uh, um, we got one more, and then we'll talk about the um, 
the thing, yeah. the open world game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I picked up a weird non-VR game called Verlet Swing. Uh, what? I might have talked about this already, but um, it is a vaporwave Spider-Man yeah. game. <laughs> okay, I did talk about it. You talked, yeah. yeah. Last uh, so yeah, I played a little bit of that, and it was it was weird. I, I enjoyed it. You played Honestly, it get two it, weeks it, in a row now. Like, you can't hate it, right? Yeah, I know. It's not. It's not bad. Like it's literally there to be my game if. I'm bored and I want to play something absentmindedly while like watching something uh, or, or listening to a podcast or something like that. I'll throw in Verlet Swing, chill out for a bit. Uh, it is not a game that uh, I, I got to say, I can't imagine myself going back to it again. But ah, we'll see. It's fine. All right, Tom. I <laughs> played this game quite some time ago. You're playing it now. Bring it up. Bring it up. Sure to murder. Sure to murder. Sure to murder. Sure to d- d- murder by Monolith and in WB. Um, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. So this was a big deal when it came out, you know, and partly because there's nothing else really released around it. Uh, and partly because it was kind of cool. And, you know, people assumed that the nemesis system was going to be this massive thing used in every game. Um, Spoiler, it wasn't. It wasn't ever. used again until <laughs> um, Shadow of War. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Which is um, a shame because the system's badass. I hear that it is badass, so often but it from is different really, people. It, it, uh, it can't be used everywhere. It just can't. Like, I it, know people were saying that, but it takes a very specific type of game to be able to use a mechanic like that. You can't throw most, the Nemesis system in Rocket League. It doesn't most, work. Most open world games could use something like the Nemesis system. I don't think so. Grand Theft Auto V would be a lot worse with the Nemesis system. What do you mean? You just have rival gangs. You bring that shit back. The Nemesis yeah, system is built for rival gangs. It is built yeah, for that. And, and GTA V made like very little mention. Like, Sure, if you were reconstructing San Andreas, yes, that would work fine. No, no, but, no. Like, but even... Tom, Tom you're, you're taking a game that exists of course, you're not going to necessarily fit into a game exists. This, so, the, the idea would be the next GTA. They also, like, the thing people are, are completely forgetting about when you talk about the Nemesis system is that there were actually story reasons for why that was a thing. So your guy can't die. But he is, and this isn't a spoiler, it happens within the first 60 seconds of the game. You're, you're in this black and white area, and this guy's just like, you have been banished from death. You're in a weird, weird-ass purgatory thing. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what he said. Um, <laughs> and you keep coming back to life. Like, it's quite literally like a respawn mechanic from Dark Souls, where it's baked into the story and into the mechanics of the game. In Grand Theft Auto V, it's not... You're, you're, it, talk, and, and, you're talking... You're talking about... Game. You're talking an existing game. Like, it doesn't have to be necessarily with death. It can just be... You, you have to bake it in. No, no, because you're only looking at the aspect of you don't die. That's not important to the Nemesis system. It's important to their dialogue. Can can you explain the Nemesis system? Okay. Yes. So go for it. Go ahead. Oh, go for it. You got it. So the the Nemesis system is a way to shoehorn political intrigue, uh, backstabbing, and playing enemies off of each other into an otherwise really normal standard by the numbers open world game. Um, okay, so that's a real <laughs> weird fucking explanation. <laughs> I was getting to it. I was getting to it. There's more than one sentence here. Well, because you lead off with, oh, I want to downplay it. Oh, no, it's it's exactly <laughs> what it says on the tin. So um, in Shadow of Mortar uh, and Shadow of War, there are different people in like the orc army in their... Uh, basically their hierarchy of of who controls who and who's bodyguarding who and who fucking hates who. Um, And you are able to selectively kill, influence, manage, uh, or play those orcs off of each other for your own benefits. Like, there's this big-ass warlord, and he's like a level 13 power. I'm like, ah, fuck. I don't want to deal with that guy. I need some help here. So let me install, like, this level 4... Yeah, he's mostly ineffective on his own, and I can kill him by breathing. Sweet. 
I'm going to have him backstab the warlord during this encounter. So I've got an extra distraction so I can fuck this guy up even harder. So he's well, not just concentrating on me. You, you still haven't really like, okay, picture it. It's imagery is very important in this. Think of a military. You have a general, a general has lieutenants underneath him. The lieutenants have sergeants underneath them. And then the sergeants have soldiers underneath them. And then you just have like grassroot fuckers. Now image that where you have three sitting on top of five, sitting on top of seven. That's how the nemesis system is laddered. If you kill a sergeant, one of the lieutenants takes the sergeant's spot. Mm -hmm. So if you can influence a lieutenant and make him join your side and then kill the sergeant above him, he takes that general spot. And now you have a general that's on your side. Okay. That is that's the big thing with it. And then there's infighting. So the the captains will fight amongst each other. Um, and they'll be like, oh well, I you know, I'm angry with these guys because I want more respect, damn it. Uh, and then they'll start fighting amongst each other, and you get to you know intervene and decide, you know, am I gonna let this guy win over this guy? Or am I gonna kill them both? that might not work out so well for you. Like, let's say you love stealth kills. Uh, the Nemesis system also gives unique traits to each of these captains and each of these characters that says, hey, this guy, immune to stealth kills. Which, by the way, there's a funny story that goes along with that, but that's a teaser. Um, and this guy, you know, he's not. So for my own insurance, I'm going to leave the guy who can be killed with stealth kills alone and kill the guy who can't because it would be a bigger problem for me. Um, so you can kind of basically build the picture of the orc army to your favor. Political intrigue and backstabbing. Uh, it's really, really neat. Um, and if you haven't interrogated the right people, if you don't have the right information, you're going in blind. There was this captain. I snuck through a stronghold. I was like Metal Gear Solid, European Extreme, perfect stealth all the way. Dropped down right behind this guy. He was cooking his dinner by a fire. I'm like, all right. Let's just fuck this guy off. I go up behind him. Stat playing. Oh, fuck. He's immune to stealth kills. He's got armor. I didn't know that going in. Uh, he turns around. And he says, yeah, I'm going to fuck you up now. I'm like, oh, shit. And had I taken the time to interrogate some of his underlings and get that information, I wouldn't have had that moment of fucking up. But I was playing God. I thought I could get through it. it didn't work. If they kill you, they not only gain in power, making them harder enemies to, to take care of, uh, but they get promotions in some cases, and they yell at you, and they say, hey, motherfucker, stay in the ground next time, and then they start yeah, attacking, that, which is great. That it adds flavor a little text. bit of flavor. Yeah, the flavor text whenever you so refight good. someone is excellent. So good. And um, there was one guy that I stabbed in the face, and he showed up again. I was like, that's weird. I thought I only had that trick. Nah, turns out he was a twin. And by the way, he's pissed that I killed his brother. Um, <laughs> the Nemesis system is really cool. Shadow of Mordor plays really well. It's quite literally the standard open world playbook of climb a tower, unlock a bunch of uh, icons all over a map, and then do Arkham Asylum style combat. You literally, it, it's the exact same combat from the Batman games yeah. and, um, out, to, to kill people. And it feels really fucking good to play. Outside a Nemesis system, it doesn't do anything unique. It does it well. It doesn't do anything unique. Yes. And then you Which add is, that unique. I don't think is a bad a, thing at all. No. No, it, it fits the game perfectly. What it does with that Arkham Asylum cell combat is it makes you feel like bad. It makes you feel like a total badass. Um, because you're running around, you're parrying people, and you can get certain upgrades and abilities based on how you've killed the captains. So are you stabbing people in the back all the time? Great. You're going to unlock more runes to make your backstabs even more powerful. So basically letting the player choose the way they want to be a badass and feeding into that. It's really cool. But then you combine it with this nemesis system that gives people uh, randomly generated strengths and weaknesses, and your standard way of playing may not work all the time and you're going to have to branch out. It's really, really unique. It keeps you on your toes. I am loving this game so far. 
And one fun thing that you can do with it, it doesn't have to be done with the Nemesis system, but it can be in unison, which is actually really fun. You have this ability of, I, I kind of referenced it earlier, of branding someone. So you'll mm -hmm. since you're kind of a ghost, you'll grab enemies and you'll get the option to, do I want intel or do I want to convert him as part of my army? So if you convert him, what happens is he acts like he's still a normal orc. He'll still follow all the orders from his war chiefs. But whenever you tell him, everyone that you have converted will start fighting for you. So let's say that there's this big war chief that you're getting ready to fight and you've converted like six of his underlings. He doesn't know. You start the battle. They're starting to fight you. You all of a sudden say, hey, let's go. They turn and all of them start slaughtering that war You chief. set up an orc political coup in an open world game completely driven by systems mechanics. It's not a menu. It's not like you're clicking through dialogue options. It's quite literally how you played the game was able to influence these orcs in a certain way to pull off really weird, cool, unique shit. So yeah, it, it's it's a very well done game. I, um, I'm loving the fuck out of it. I, I'm probably going to go right from this to Shadow of War, um, which didn't make the same kind review of review as well. Yeah. It, it, the microtransaction aspect of it killed it. It still plays well. It plays very well. Okay. If you don't feel like you're getting punched in the face with microtransactions, the only thing you might dislike is it feels like the Nemesis system is thrown more at you because it's bigger. They made okay. improvements to it. I think that are better, but it does hit you a lot more often. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, Shadow Shadow of Mordor, really good so far. Um, it goes on sale really, really, really regularly. It's probably been a free game somewhere at some point in time. So if you've got it in your library, which you probably do if, if you play a bunch of games, uh, check it out. It's worth it. It's a good game. All right, fellas. You ready to get okay. some news on? Okay. Oh, sorry, Adam. Yeah, let's do it. Much, Can we briefly talk about a game I haven't played? Yes. Have you guys seen sure. Have you guys seen Due Process? Uh, ho, ho, ho. This game looks Smig, cool. No. Smig brought this up to me. This does look really cool. Yeah, so it's um so it's a tactical PVP shooter, right? Uh very similar to like a Rainbow Six Siege or a Counter-Strike kind of thing. Uh planting the bombs and whatnot. Um, art style is really cool. It looks like a low res Borderlands, like if Borderlands released on the PS One or something. Ooh. So like some of the lighting is still kind of good, but like not even just the visual style, but also the animations and stuff. Like like there are smoke animations that look like they're about ten to fifteen frames per second. I mean it looks intentional. Yep. It doesn't just look poorly optimized or something, but it's just got a really really cool style. Um, but my favorite thing about it is the maps are initially uh, procedurally generated and then their level editors will, you know, make some changes or whatever to make sure it's not something stupid and broken. And they have the same map pool of these procedurally generated levels for a week and then they generate more for the next week. So every single week you're playing different maps that have been procedurally generated so the game doesn't get stale. But you have a week to play those maps so that you can still develop strategies and stuff because it is a very strategy heavy, uh, cool. you know, super team team oriented tactical shooter. And there's so it's a like, planning phase, and you absolutely see the map in planning phase. So even if it's a new map, you get to see it. Yeah, you get to see the layout, and each player can draw on the map and stuff, and like erase their lines so everybody can coordinate and and like visually show what they're talking about. It's really cool. I'd like, like to see what you that do with onward. Yeah, I'd like to see that map, that map, uh, like the map drawing mechanic work in other games. I think that's really cool. Yes. As well as something else that they have going for them, if they save all the maps of prior, because eventually the devs aren't going to keep generating these maps. The game is going to be abandoned by the devs. It just happens. Mm -hmm. Natural life cycle. If they keep all these maps and they just actually add them to the game in the very end so people can continue to play it after they're done, mm -hmm. there'll be so many fucking maps to go through yeah. that no one will ever be able to memorize the maps. Ooh. And that's a good thing for what they're going for. Yeah. 
but the game just looks cool. Um, I really like the UI and stuff too. Like all the text um, is really nice to read. Your ammo counter is like on your gun. Like sort of like a, almost like a, a hologram projection or something right by the gun. But it's like you're looking at the gun when where you're shooting and stuff. Like your ammo counter is right there. Uh, it's front and center, but it isn't like in the way. Um, I think I saw, like, somebody looked at a door, and underneath it, it said, only guns in the rifle class can, bullets will penetrate through the door, like metal door or whatever. Oh. So, like, little things like Ooh. that just seem to, it just looks really nice, and it seems like they put a lot of care into it. And when I was watching the sights, in aim, like, for targeting, to aim down a sight, that shit looked really crisp. Like it looked really nice. Like I, I don't know how to really properly express what I'm trying to say here, but sometimes in a shooter, the shooting mechanic doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel clean. Mm -hmm. This looked super fucking clean when it came to the shooting. So yeah. I, I'm, I saw it. I'm kind of, I know it's in a beta. When it comes out, this might be something I try. Yeah. So, so right now they're doing a paid beta. So anybody that's pre-ordered the game can play it this weekend. Um, I think it's, I think it's like 25 bucks or something. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. I don't know. The I just wanted to bring it up because I, I saw it for the first time today and I thought it looked really, really cool. And I know Tom, you would love the way it looks if you saw it, just like the, the style. It's really cool. It's got a lot of charm. Yeah, I'll check it out. I, I really thought it looked pretty sweet. It's something I might end up trying. Yeah. For sure, especially when it releases, I think for I would definitely end up getting it. Yeah, and they did a interesting thing. Like they were the, um, they requested the game be taken off of Steam that through the week, and we're having streamers run betas on it. Oh, it was really weird how they did that because um, Smig pointed out the game to me. He's like, "Hey, this game, someone's playing it." He was looking up on Steam, couldn't find it. I was looking up on Steam online and was able to find it. Oh, because yeah. It only you you have to have app. a direct link. It's not like searchable. Yes. Okay. And so Google, the way Google archives the internet, they had a direct link. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It was really interesting. But either way. Um, news. That's that. Time for some news. And how about we just start with some news for what we're playing right now. Rocket League. Rocket League has announced it is revamping its uh, tournament. I shouldn't say revamping. It's not right. Adding some new shit to the tournament <laughs> system. This is good because it really needs it. The tournament so a couple system times was... a day. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no. Yeah. I was just saying the tournament system was something that I think we were all really, really hyped about. And it's a really cool system, but it's just not used that much. Like they could have done Correct. more with it. And it's cool that they're going to do more with it. I was actually yeah. disappointed when the tournament system came out because inevitably I always compare any tournament system in any game ever to the tournament system that was in Smash Melee. Smash Brothers Melee had the ultimate tournament system where you could set up all kinds of weird shit. And that's what I've been wanting games to do forever. And Rocket League just didn't measure up, unfortunately. What did the, the Melee... Tournament system it was just like an ungodly amount of options and like loser drops winner drops like you you had a lot of control over exactly how a bracket would flow in and out of each other um and the one in rocket league it's it's fine but it, it almost seems anemic it seems really thin for what it should be hmm. yeah i mean it's just a standard tournament people sign in they throw you into a bracket you set all the game parameters yeah, I wish I could set bracket parameters. Like, I really wish I could have a, you know, like, loser drops rumble tournament. You you can. No, like, like player loser drops. Right? Hold on, what, like do, you, what do you if mean? You, if you are on the bottom of the scoreboard, like, you have five people who want to play, you're going to oh, do double rumble. Yeah, yeah, but I wish that it was baked in because in Melee, you could bake stuff like that into tournament rules. Yeah, but like, that's not a tournament. you had a lot of control. Like you're just talking about like round robin, just playing with people. That's like that's 
not really tournaments. It's it's one of the options, right? Like Melee's tournament system had an ungodly amount of options to be able to control exactly how you wanted multiple matches to work, and Rocket League just doesn't. I, I get like the stuff you do. The stuff you do on Smash GG can't be done inside the Rocket League tournament system. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, to not what to want, like what you were talking about, would be like upset with other car games because cars don't have wings because <laughs> Rush 2049 had wings. Yes, I am. Okay. Interesting that okay. you choose that that particular game for your analogy. Well, it's we're just we're I currently playing a game with cars Where that have rockets boxes. attached to the back of them. Oh, true. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> um, so for the tournament mode, a couple times a day, they're going to have sanctioned tournaments by them that you play in. If you get a win or advance further, you get in-game currency for tournaments that could be redeemed for cups that then go to buy tournament items. So now there's going to be a third store introduced to Rocket League, and it gets even more complicated because based on how high you rank, you end up getting different types of cups you can buy. So there's like, you know, you get a general tournament currency that goes into multiple types of cups that go into stores that certain cups buy certain things. It sounds fragmented as hell, and I'm worried about how they're doing that. I will only play if there are Cousin Vinny Cups. God damn it, Tom. But yes. Do you, how um, many Cousin Vinny Cups do you have? None anymore. Eight. It's all Cousin Vinny Cups. Have, because have Cousin like Vinny Cups make the very best bathroom water cups. Yeah. They make best everything because they're cheap and abundant. Um, but yeah, Rocket League tournament. It's going to be interesting to see how they do it. I'm excited though. So yeah, that's that. Um, other news. Ah, oh, this one was fun. Tall building is tall. So um, Microsoft released their flight simulator to much prevail. Like people love the game. It's it's generally hailed as a great fucking game. And is the new crisis. No one can yes. run that shit right now. <laughs> I heard that even like basically high-end modern mm. processors still don't run it at 60 frames high. Like 40, high not. 40 frames is the best people yep. are getting. Well, because they're also doing weird shit with data streaming and stuff because to make the maps and everything, they use two or two petabytes of satellite imaging to put oh this shit together. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, it's the nuts. amount of data they, they they've done is insane. They've, they've done an insane job with this, this game. I like that but I saw something where there, there were people were... Uh, crashing their planes into their friends' houses. <laughs> like as a thing. That's, That's kind of funny. Um, so there was a bug that created a 212-story building. So you're just flying around, not thinking much of it, and then all of a sudden, bam, monster building. <laughs> an, an interesting bug. Location, though. <laughs> so yeah. I, I can't... I can't call this a bug. It's not a bug. It is exactly the data the game was given. So to augment some of their, uh, you know, some of their terrain generation, because a lot of places like you can't actually put real cities because cities will have clauses like, hey, if you use the image of our city, you have to give us a nickel every time it's on something. And Microsoft doesn't want to do that shit. So they auto generate a whole lot of this terrain and a whole lot of these, um, uh, these locations and towns and cities and whatnot. And how they get that data is through OpenStreetMap, which is quite literally like open source Google Maps. You can go in, you can edit it just like Wikipedia. You can say, no, this street is strong. This is a one way. It's actually named this. This building has three stories. Somebody, and it's it's not like a troll. Somebody just had a typo in one of their edits where a two-story building, they typed in 212 in the editor <laughs> and Microsoft took it at face value so you'd be like searching, like there's a nice little suburb, a bunch of two-story townhouses, just really normal thing, and then monolith, like the giant Half-Life Two style citadel <laughs> in front of like this really normal <laughs> suburb, just towering over everything else uh, because of um, a, a typo and some open data. So yeah, that's fun. It, it's just it's super fun. Um, look up images of this. It just looks absurd. It's awesomely it's absurd. It <laughs> um, seems like a yeah, cool way to just chill out and see some beautiful scenery. 
Indeed. Yeah. It's um I actually um talked about this some on the quick hit thing I was doing. The the imaging on that is just unreal. Like mm. the, just the trailer they did last year, it looks insane. Yeah. Yeah. I want VR mode because I've got my I've got my throttle, I've got my flight stick. Like I'm I'm fucking ready. Give me VR. That said, if the game is running at 40 FPS on, on not a, a good Android VR experience, screen, yeah. Um, nah, nah, I imagine there's probably reasons why it's not VR ready yeah. yet. Yeah, but I'm waiting. Though. I'm waiting. Is there it, is some VR news, Tom. Wait, is uh oh is, really? Is Flight Simulator on the Game Pass? Oh, thank you for calling that out. Yes, yes, yes it is. Base I need level to is install on that. I have not ASAP. installed it yet, but I will. There are uh, varying levels of the game i don't know i think it's something with like you get different planes and stuff so it is just the base level of the game so that be said if you have game pass it's fucking free go get it um but the other vr news uh so oculus headsets um i don't know the actual stat they're a pretty fucking popular thing especially since they have the cordless mm -hmm. one uh facebook is required because they own it is requiring going forward that to use an oculus you have to have a facebook account oh which by the way uh the the creator palmer lucky the owner of oculus before he sold her when the sales announcement was made was on reddit and blog saying no we're never gonna make you do this thing uh, don't worry about it yes i know facebook bought us but i promise <laughs> I absolutely promise you will I never promise. be required to use your Facebook account to use your headset. It will never be required. I promise. I mean, to be fair, oh, fuck. he had no ability to make that promise. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, he didn't have any ability. When you sell your tech company, you lose the ability to make promises like that. Unless you get and, one uh, hell of a contract. Facebook... <laughs> yeah, and now Facebook says, uh, hey, guys, want uh, you want to use your headset? It'd be a damn shame if you didn't have a Facebook account. That does suck. So what all information do you need to give Facebook to create an account? Because it's really not that big of a deal if you could just create a burner account just for the sake, just because you have to have yeah, an account. You need a phone number. You need a real phone number, I believe. I don't think you do. Pretty sure you need a phone number. I'm pretty sure you don't. You need an email. I don't think you need a phone number. I can't remember. It's been a long time <laughs> I, I i got rid of my facebook account like 10 years ago so yeah if i had a headset right now i'd be fucked there are lots of well okay lots there are several people um if you uh if you take the oculus subreddit as any kind of authority that don't have facebook accounts or don't want those things linked for whatever reason i totally mm -hmm. get it if you are playing like <laughs> let's let's say you are playing some uh, yep. interesting yep. Um, <laughs> content <laughs> on those headsets. What, what kind of you don't content? necessarily want that link to the same thing that talks to your grandma or your boss, right? There's That's... there's a reason why people don't want their VR headsets linked into their social media, and yeah. now you don't have an option. That's the point I'm getting at: is that you don't have to link it to your personal already existing Facebook account. You can make a new account. Facebook is going to have a lot of dickbag McGee accounts com coming up. Yeah, exactly. All a lot, lot of John them. Smiths. A lot, yeah, of it, a lot of January lot of 1st birthdays. Zuckerberg. So okay, many January 1st birthdays. A lot, lot of fucks. Let's be clear about this, though. Still the ability <laughs> or the idea that that kind of stuff might be linking to Facebook. It, this is kind of far-fetched-ish, but it's not that hard to data mine that you know what someone plays. You know what something looks like with it, some, this new burner thing's playing. So, I mean, it's, it's gonna, still like, being tracked. It's still kind of shitty. Yeah. Facebook logins attached to a specific IP, and then you've got a totally different, brand new Facebook account logging in from the exact same IP address. It doesn't take a goddamn genius to attach those. Literally one query. Uh, anyway. So. Yeah, everyone's required to have Facebook. <laughs> Go fuck yourselves. Uh, next up, yeah. Untitled Geese Game. Untitled ah, Geese yes. Game? Uh, so, yes, yeah, so it's not a brand new game. They're just adding the ability to bring in a second player 
for geese. Yes. He's going to have two geese in Untitled Goose Game. It's so good. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I am going to honk and flap at my <laughs> wife, and then we're going to play this game. Honk. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. I, I enjoy that. I still haven't played Untitled Goose Game, and I really want to. And this is it's more, great. even more of a reason to play it now. That's fantastic. All right. Yeah. Uh, expect that free update uh, coming out soon. I want to say. Did that ever that's, come that's, to Steam, or is it still we waiting on that? Yeah. I thought it. I thought it was on Steam. I never checked. It's something that I thought was a cool game. I just never had the desire to buy it. It's not but, like it's not a mind blowing it, game. Yeah, it's it a seems game like you fuck a fun, around. It's a goose. It seems like a fun weekend. Yeah, <laughs> or a fun day. One day. Well, especially if you have multiplayer, that makes it a little more depth. But either way, it's there. Enjoy. Something else is going to be here soon. Is EA Play to the Steam Store? So, or it says EA Play, but I'm assuming that's the same thing as EA Access. I actually sure don't know. Anyway. Like ninety percent sure. They may be. So just either way, it. they're they're bringing a subscription model to um, Steam, which is really cool. Because that means potentially like Game Pass might be able to work its way into Steam. So you might be able to do Game Pass like through that. Steam rather than through the Windows Store. Which yeah, honestly isn't that always bad, fucking... No, it's not. But I forget like when I'm looking for games to play, I go to my Steam library and I always forget, oh shit, I've got Arian and Long Dark and Master Chief Collection over here and this other thing. And I don't play Halo nearly as often as I should be. Because I forget it exists because it's in a different window. Yeah. Give me everything in the same window, damn it. It's a plug for GOG.com, where GOG Galaxy allows you to put all of your stores in the same window, including Game Pass. That was actually been not my affiliated, new- by the way. Not at all. Not affiliated. I just love them so much. Not affiliated, but we could be for the right hey. price. For the right price. Talk to me, GOG. All right. Um, Oh, let's get into probably I the keep biggest unplugging my headphones one I'm of the worst god damn it tom <laughs> let's right. get to one of the other uh things we have apples inform epic games that they will terminate all developer accounts so yeah, yeah this is getting ugly if um, you if you don't remember last week um there was some, shen- some shenanigans done by both epic and then subsequently by apple as expected where and Google. And Google, where they're bypassing App Store payment systems so that they don't have to pay a cut, and which is explicitly against the terms of service of those two app stores. So Fortnite was pulled, and subsequently, I think all Epic shit was pulled from the App Store of Apple and Google Play. So what's kind of neat about the Apple App Store is that basically everything has to be signed over. Um, you have to have, you know, a signed this can run on stuff at a station by Apple to get the software running generally uh, for any public account. Um, Epic is claiming that doing this will actually destroy the Unreal Engine when it comes to uh, games on iOS, which is massive. If it's an engine ban, which it looks like this could be, there's nothing any third-party devs can do. Like, imagine if you're a third-party dev. You've built a game. You're, you've launched it. Everything's working great. Apple's happy with you. Like, you've got all your ducks in a row. It turns out that, no, nah, you chose your engine wrong because now there's a, a corporate dick-waving contest. You're caught in the middle, and now no one can play your hit indie game because you had the gall to choose Epic as your engine. Yeah, that that's gonna suck. That's gonna suck a lot if that ends up being the deal. Hopefully, it's not the deal. So, um, Apple or uh, Epic has actually uh, filed more court paperwork to put an emergency injunction in place to keep Apple from closing this, so they can figure it out. But uh, there's, I don't think there's a good guy or bad guy in this. It's not black and white. It's very much a lot of a whole lot of PR and a whole lot of corporate dick waving. Um, and a whole lot of just flaunting the rules because, hey, we're big enough, right? 
and it looks like a lot of little people might get squashed in the process. When Godzilla goes up against Mothra, cities get leveled, man. Yeah. You, you don't <laughs> exist in a bubble, Epic. Yeah, but I mean, in the end, something good could come from it, but we'll see. Hopefully it doesn't go back to status quo. Yeah, I, I hope this all just yeah. doesn't go back to status. That would suck. If we end up with app stores that have to be able to accept the fact that apps can actually run through a different payment system, that could be kind of cool. Yeah, that'd be nice. But we'll see. Um, that was an update. You'll definitely be hearing more about this later because this isn't going away anytime soon. But we have some fun stuff to finish with, fellas. Fun stuff. We did it this time. Uh, fun we, stuff. Wait, wait, Something we, fun. Name that I'm section. Excited. Just- the epic versus apple stuff will will be going on forever can we rename this news segment to corporate dick waving update well yes yes we will anytime we have news on this it's going to be the corporate dick waving update okay cool all right but for happy news i'm going to start with one that i thought i'd be more excited about but it's actually the one i'm least excited about uh borders gate 3 early access next month so um the game got pushed back but the early access is still lining up to come out next month. I should say still is lining up to come out next month, which is going to be really fucking cool. Um, everyone's pretty excited about it. It's the people who did um, Divinity Original Sin 2, and it's going to be doing a very, very, very highly acclaimed series. So hell yes, comes out I'm next excited. Month. I'm really excited. I'm but. excited. I'm excited for you guys. <laughs> that's not my <laughs> cup of tea, but that's really cool, though. And there's also some other people like Josh is really big into it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Also, one more thing. And this is the final bit of news we got for you. And it's available now, motherfuckers. Rogue Legacy 2. Rogue Legacy 2. I never did play the first one. I know you were a big fan of it. It's really good. Rogue Legacy is awesome. Um, If you enjoyed the first, this one looks just as good and actually looks prettier. Um, not to say the first one looked ugly, but it did look older. So it is there. So go check it out. Early access, so beware for that. But all in all, if it's anything like the first one's going to be, it's going to be awesome. I, I trust that, Dev. They've done really good things, and they've put out really cool products that they've then ended up supporting for quite a while. So I don't see too much risk in this one. Here do I. All that said, fellas. You got anything else to add? Um, hmm. you get a big, big old VR fuck you to Oculus and Facebook. All right. Oh, well, well, one one quick product recommendation. Get um, it. All right. The, it doesn't matter the brand, but that gooey stuff that you can buy to clean your keyboard out, I used for the first time, and it is fantastic. It's so nice to get. Yeah. the it just to get all the dust off of your keycaps without having to like pop them all off and deep clean them all. It's so, so convenient and it works way better than air duster. Oh, do it. I'm gonna have to I actually shot. pop all my keys off and then like rinse them in like warm water and dish soap. Like I've got a whole thing. Mm-hmm. I have to grab that from you later. I've, cause as long as you I'm keep a, up on it, nice. I mean, you don't really need to, to deep clean very often, you know? I'm a heathen. Yeah. I've never popped my keys. I've had well, this keyboard for over five years. What does your keyboard look like? Is I've it had bad? it for over no. five years. No, it doesn't look Does it look bad. like a public office keyboard? A library keyboard? A little better yeah. than I have dust. I air dusted it once or twice in five years. Once? Oh, my God. Oh. What about all the <laughs> grease and grime on your dirty fingers? So. Are you calling me? Are you when are you're you calling spaghetti me over your keyboard? Are you're you an outdoor. You're, you're an outdoorsman. Fuck you. No. Uh, <laughs> all right. Anyway, this is why all my fishing is done in VR. <laughs> so, Adam endorses gooey shit to roll on your keyboard for the win. Yes. <laughs> all right. All that said, um, let's give us a little rundown. Um, if you're here on Twitch, keep in mind over on our YouTube, we will clip out some interesting parts of the podcast. We put up some other stuff like montages, trying to do this little quick hits thing once a week now. So there's some other content actually making it to YouTube. So go check it out. Kind of cool. It's a 72 pin connector on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. But we also do this live every Saturday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. 
you might have noticed through tonight, like, hey, we talk to people during the podcast. You can come in, be part of the conversation, or you can jump in and play the game with us. So come over to Twitch. It's way more fun than YouTube, I promise. Uh, we also got a Twitter, which is 72PC underscore official. We tweet out plays of the day every day. Also been doing some fun tweets about every other day is what it's coming out to be because we're lazy. But we are getting some actual other stuff out there. So you follow us. It's a good time. And we also have a Discord link below. Whether you're listening on or if you're in Twitch, if you're on YouTube, I think we have a link somewhere on our YouTube for it. But finally, that's a lot of shit to remember. Just go to 72pinconnector.com, get it all. And soon-ish, sometime, get it all. We're working on, on, on the, the website revamp. It's looking good. It'll happen. It's looking I've, good. I've been working on it. Uh, tirely, what's the opposite of tirelessly? Because I've been really lazy. Uh, but yeah, for the past three weeks. So soon. But soon. And that's all that matters. TM. Soon. Soon, soon TM. TM. It's a trademark so- term. We will sue. I think I think that's all we got, fellas. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Remember to keep your water bubbly and mangoed. We just had a really awkward situation where none of us wanted to sign off. That's it. Yeah, no. Nah. That's it. That's it. That's it. All right, fuck it. Fuck that's it. Till next it. week. Game on. That's it. <laughs>